Hello and welcome to the Jared Moss Soccer Podcast. This is Jared Moss from OnlineSoccerAcademy.com and as always, I'm your host. Today is March 24th, 2011 and today's guest is me. If you're a regular listener, you know that this podcast isn't all about me, it's all about our guest. And uh, today though, I'm going to tell you a little story, not a bedtime story like your mama might have told you when you were a little one, but a story about a Puerto Rico bus trip. Yes, a Puerto Rico bus trip during a player appearance I made when I was playing professionally for the Puerto Rico Islanders. The main reason I'm telling you the story is because I'm filling in for not having a podcast guest this week. I haven't done a podcast in a few weeks because I've been traveling a bunch doing our college recruiting hours for our other company, collegerecruitingwebsite.com, and we've been working a lot of overtime lately on the OSA World Juggathon to benefit nothing but nets. I've been trying to schedule guests. And I've just had some bad luck with scheduling them lately. Uh, our schedules quite ha- have not aligned. Um, but next week, keep your fingers crossed, and we should be back on schedule with some quality guests. Listeners have been Twittering at me and messaged me, asking me when the next podcast is coming out, which is great. And I just don't want to leave y'all hanging anymore, so we're going to have a special episode. So let me set the plot a little bit for this Puerto Rico bus trip story. It's summer 2007, and Puerto Rico is quite warm this time of year. It's actually hotter there in the mornings than in the afternoons, which is why we trained at 3 p.m. and not in the morning like most pro teams do. So it's nighttime and I'm just chilling in my room, relaxing, talking to my girlfriend who's my future wife, and uh, on my Bluetooth. It was, it was 2007 back then, so give me a break. I only wore it when I was driving or in my room. And I get a call from our team manager. She says you have a player appearance tomorrow. Be at the stadium for 8 a.m. This team manager was a nice lady, but not very well organized, so a last-minute appearance I wasn't very excited about, but it wasn't a total shocker. When you're on the island, you learn how to roll with it. I'm thinking, no problem, I'll go sign some autographs, do what I need to do, and be home by 10 a.m. so the remainder of the day I can rest up for training. I show up the next morning at 8 a.m. with a few of my teammates, and to my surprise, my whole team is there, including our coach, Colin Clark. We're all waiting for the bus to pick us up and take us to the appearance, which we soon find out is two hours away and in the mountains on the other side of the island. Now I know, now I know for sure my hopes of being home at 10 a.m. and resting is out the window. Ten minutes go by and no bus. No one is in time on Puerto Rico except the Americans, so this isn't a total shocker. 8.15, nothing. Finally, at 8.30, 30 minutes late, a yellow school bus rolls up. We all look at each other and think, great. Everyone gets on the bus. We immediately realize this tiny little fan blowing on the driver's face isn't going to cool the whole bus. So we recall using the elementary school two-thumb, press-in, finger-jam, drop-down window method to get some airflow. That's right, there's no AC and it's summertime in Puerto Rico. It's hot. Bus pulls out of the parking lot, and we're all riding along. Guys are listening to music, sleeping, telling jokes. 20 minutes into the trip, we stop for gas. Now, you would think that a bus driver would fill up their gas tank prior to picking up their riders. Not this guy. He's filling up, and now the whole bus starts to smell like gas because the windows are down. Guys are yelling out smart aleck remarks about how he should have filled up beforehand. No one's happy. But we're still in good spirits, so everyone is sort of just laughing it off. The driver finally finishes fueling up, and we take off. We're riding along, and 20 minutes down the road, at around 9.30 a.m.-ish, someone shouts out, Isn't that our stadium? Sure enough, it was. We had driven in the opposite direction to our appearance to get gas. How does that make sense? So in theory, he could have picked us up at 9.30 a.m. at the stadium, had this guy gotten gas on his own time, instead of picking us up at 8 a.m., which in his mind was 8.30 a.m., and taking us to get gas. Now me and the players are really unhappy. After a bunch of rude comments to the driver under everyone's breath, we get back to enjoying the ride and seeing some of Puerto Rico's beautiful countryside. Windows are still down, and the breeze blowing in my face is feeling more like a blow dryer than that cool ocean breeze they talk about in those Visit Puerto Rico commercials. It's hot. 
Around 10 a.m.-ish, I start to notice smoke coming from the front of the bus. Now the driver wasn't smoking, but the bus was. Then the bus breaks down and we pull over. Are you kidding me? Driver starts talking to the bus in Spanish. I can't even speak Spanish to a Rosetta Stone audiobook, so I have no idea what he's saying. Now all the players and staff exit the bus and head over to hang out at a tiny subway next to a small gas station while this driver tries to fix the bus. Funny how good one of those little subway white chocolate chip cookies will make you feel at a time like this. Around 11 a.m., a guy that no one knows the name of, just that he is around the team a lot, pulls up in a Ford Expedition. Six players volunteer to ride with him and go to the appearance early. The rest of us stay behind and wait till the bus is fixed. We needed some players to go ahead because the whole school was waiting on us to make our appearance and they mainly speak, they all speak Spanish so that's why they took all the Spanish speaking players because they didn't want guys like me to re be repeating hola in a southern country accent to these Spanish kids. So our bus finally gets fixed and we take off. As we drive up to the school we noticed our teammates on a red dirt field covered in dust and sweat running around and sweating from running around playing soccer with these kids. Now usually at an appearance you just shake hands and sign autographs uh, but this looked pretty intense. Mind you, we still have training later this afternoon. We all get out of the bus, the players on the field come in and we get shuffled into the gym where there's a few hundred kids waiting to see us. An announcer says something in Spanish, they all get excited and we proceed to, to sign autographs and take pictures in the next 20 minutes. Now this is definitely one of the cooler parts about being a pro. These kids may never be able to recognize us in plain clothes, but since we were wearing, wearing our eye liner polos, they thought we were so cool. After the autograph session, they load us on these street, these street trolleys and take us up to the top of the mountain, where we are going to meet the local mayor on a flower plantation. So we, we meet the mayor of this extremely small town and they serve us some traditional Puerto Rico food with a lot of beans. There's a little presentation and then they take us on a short tour. Each player is allowed to pick out one flower, which came in this little pot planter. The only flowers I've ever had in my life at this point were handmade flowers that I made from a paper napkin that I gave to my significant other. So it was pretty cool to get a real flower. At the same time, very strange seeing all these manly soccer players walking around with potted flowers. After a while of being there, they thank us for coming, we thank them, and off we go. On our yellow bus, back to our part of the island. It's around 1.30 p.m.-ish, we have training at 3 p.m., and all I can think is, it's hot, I'm sweaty, dehydrated, tired, and in no mood for training. Pretty much everyone is on the same page. Thankfully, the bus had no issues on the ride home, and after an hour and a half of, of hot blow dryer wind, we pull up to the stadium at 2.55 p.m., exactly five minutes before training. Are you serious? How are we going to have a quality training session after a day like today? Turns out, we didn't. Training was awful, no one cared, and later that evening, I fell asleep while talking on my Bluetooth to my future wife. That's my Puerto Rico bus story. I hope you enjoyed it. A live in the dream moment for sure. On a serious note, since I'm not normally a storyteller, I love being a pro and playing for Colin Clark and the Puerto Rico Islanders. I wish my injuries hadn't been an issue and I could have stayed there a lot longer. So thank you for everything, Colin. Thank you, Puerto Rico Islanders. I really appreciate it. I just figured this was a funny story to share. Feel free to let me know what you think of my Puerto Rico bus story on Facebook and Twitter. I'm listed as Jared Monson, on both of those. You can find me on YouTube, listed as Online Soccer Academy. And you can also send me a message in your message center at OnlineSoccerAcademy.com. I'd love to hear what you think. Thanks for listening to this special episode of the Jared Montz Soccer Podcast. My name is Jared Montz, and until next time, remember to believe in it and keep living the dream.